Mike Kako. A common by the curtain call, a program of reviews, previews, interviews, and features of and or with the great art and artists on Maui and beyond. I'm Paul James Brown. Viewpoints Gallery in Makawa has been hosting an invitational exhibit, a celebration of Hawaii, for 17 years. It is an opportunity for the finest artists from throughout the state to create works that demonstrate love and appreciation for our host culture and this magical singular paradise on earth, Hawaii. It also gives Maui Island viewers a chance to be introduced to new artists. This year, for the first time since its founding in 1989, the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts sent consultants to see if there was anything the state needed for its collection. Not surprisingly, the state recommended the three Dick Nelsons in the show. In his 94th year, the creator of the revolutionary watercolor mixing technique, the Tri-Q system, is creating amazing works. It's difficult to comment on these works without taking up the entire show. So I will show you photos of each one and allow you to have a conversation with yourself. Here is Yes. This is Confounded. And this one is called Drifter. Gene Bitts, formerly known as Gene Young, has given us this glorious oil on linen painting called Hina. This work is mind-bogglingly complex throughout the work. The work itself is made up of Hawaiian symbols. Around the corner from the piece are two paintings which are a key to the symbols. There is a wonderful video on the Viewpoints page where Ms. Bitts introduces the work and explains its secrets while Kumu Kimokea Kapalehua looks on and makes comments. It is a work that will challenge the viewer to unlock and understand its true meaning. Oahu's Rick Beck is a new artist to me. His cast and carved glass have taken glass into a new realm of sculpture. Here is Blue Spiral. And then there is Green Archer. Their texture and heft made them completely unique among glass sculpture. Here is another glass work. This is by Karuna Santoro. It is called Drifting Effortlessly, and it is kill-formed glass with silver inclusions. It's a stunning work, and a different direction for Ms. Santoro. Susanna Cromwell calls this mixed-media block print Delicious Monster. They look like prints on cloth that have been arranged and then framed. It is thoroughly original. She paints in acrylic. Another new artist to me is Sandra Blazel. Here is Drum Circle. It reminds me of Natasha Young, with the cars in the background and the distinct local feel to it. And then there is this Hopper-esque, Local Nighthawks. Even the title is reminiscent of Hopper. And finally, here is Sway. If it reminds you of Susie Papa Nicholas, join the club. Miss Blazelle is an exceptionally accomplished painter. I hope she finds her own true voice. Speaking of Susie Papa Nicholas, she has four very Susie paintings in this show. This is Wahine at sunrise, Pua Kehala Keao, then Young Dancer with Flute, Dancer Resting in Yellow, and finally Basket Weaver. Miss Papa Nicholas specializes in focusing on action and not on faces. Melissa Chimera consistently creates absolutely original art. There is nothing derivative about anything she does. This diptych called Breaking Open features Pule Lehua and Koa butterflies. It is oil kozo mulberry paper, stitch silk linen. Note the detail in this piece. Also, it is listed as a diptych, but she is selling them separately. Among the more unusual works in this show is Jayok Lee and Becky Lewis's Clay Wire and Palm Inflorescence Eruption. This work captures the violence and power of a volcano. Martha Woodbury is among our finest artists. Her work is always captivating. Her two pieces in this show are Alala and Enso. The Alala is the Hawaiian crow, which is currently extinct in the wild, and Enso is a sacred symbol in Zen Buddhism. The symbolism refers to the beginning and end of all things, the circle of life and the connectedness of existence. It symbolizes emptiness or fullness, presence or absence, all things might be contained within or conversely excluded by its boundaries. I was surprised to see this was a Martha Woodbury. It is an exceptional departure from her abstract work she is so renowned for. Her other work is a more familiar abstract expressionist piece entitled Pele and Kanaloa. Pele, the goddess of the volcano and fire, dominates the work, but the blue of the ocean god Kanaloa is center. 
The golden, yellow, and orange of Pele vibrate with energy. One can almost feel the heat. And then the blue of Kanaloa feels like one is beneath the surface in the depths of the sea. It is a great piece. Casey McLean has done some wonderful painting of Paia at dusk in Baldwin Avenue in Makawao. Afternoon Hughes shows the interior of a restaurant before opening with a waiter doing prep work. Note how the perspective of the chairs, the tables, and the reflection on the top of the seats leads your eye to the waiter. Carmen Gardner has two very different paintings in this show. One can almost smell the sweet fragrance from this magnificent bouquet of white plumeria entitled Scented Summer. And then here is a beautiful portrait of the tragic princess Victoria Kaiulani, who died from a pneumonia at 23. Peggy Hopper sent two beautiful charcoal, acrylic, and watercolor portraits. One of Hawaii's most well-known artists, it's a big feather in viewpoints cap to have Ms. Hopper as a participant. Here is Miley, and this one is called Kaimilani. Joseph Fletcher's muse is the Pu'unene Sugar Mill. He has two oil on panel paintings in this show. This is golden light over the mill. And here is Sugar Days. Golden light shows the mill as it is today, shut down and looking proud. In Sugar Days, Mr. Fletcher shows the mill prior to January 2017 when the mill was shut down permanently. Wow, just wow. Presence is handmade paper and acrylic by Karen Davidson. It is a contemplative piece with a three-dimensional quality. The halo of blue and green perfectly set off the bronze bust. Linda Whittemore is known for her amazing abstract monotype prints. In Shoreline South, she has chosen oil on cradled wood panel for her media. All I can say is her late mom, the wonderful painter Margaret Bedell, must be smiling up in heaven. Beyond the Horizon is a huge painting by yet another new artist to me, Samolina Puapu Aga. It is a commanding work. The foreground feels almost like the icy Antarctic, but the horizon dances with anticipation and joy. This next work by Charles Antoine Valeris feels more like the art of trash than a celebration of Hawaii. Entitled Elephants Never Forget, it's marine debris on upcycled boat window wood offcuts framed in manila rope. See what I mean? Diana Lair has been delving into serious video art, but her forte is as a colorist, both in painting and pastels. Where water meets the sky is an oil painting on wood panel. It appears there is a storm brewing. Mary Beth Binder has bedazzled this gun surfboard with stained glass mosaic. It probably wouldn't be too great for catching the waves, but it would certainly be a conversation piece. The Guardian of Prayer is a stoneware work by J. Oak Lee. He has a most distinctive style. His heads are immediately recognizable. His work has a prehistoric, almost Easter Island feel to it. These two mixed media and found object embedded in layered resin shadow box by Jennifer J. Stevens are born in Kihei with a pineapple kalo leaf shell, starfish, fern, and split leaf philodendron surrounding her, while Maui Girl sports a bushel of bananas, also some shells and flowers. She stares into nothing space. Both of these works remind me of Monty Python. This quadratiptic Ulu Kala Ma'i by Sarah Cole has a separate price on each panel, but they should never be separated. They belong together. You can see how the orange in one panel relates to the orange in the next one and how perfectly they go together. The 17th Annual Celebration of Hawaii Part 2 continues daily 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Viewpoints Gallery, 3620 Baldwin Avenue in Makawao until April 16th. Admission is free. It's a beautiful show with many outstanding, exceptional works of art. Don't miss it. Well, that's Curtain Call for this week. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Paul James Brown. Ahui ho! Melissa Chimera.